Fred Warner's extension. Five years, $95 million. He's the highest paid linebacker of all time. Kind of amazing to think 10 years ago, Fred uh, Patrick Willis signed five years, $50 million. Times have changed. Uh, what are your takeaways from this deal, Varuna? Okay. The first thing is that congratulations to Fred Warner. I think he earned it the way he played. The second thing that initial thought came to my mind was that I hope that he will stay injury free. I think that's the biggest concern because George Kittle got the, got his extension next year. He missed eight games, but so far I think Fred Warner has played every game possible, the hardest possible way. So I believe that he can remain healthy. That's the second thing. And the third thing was I was thinking, has the 49er mentality changed this front office? Because they did let uh, Deepers Buckner go, right? They could have made, made that deal if they really wanted to. But this year, they signed every player that they thought crucial to this team. I mean, starting from ten, Trent Williams, they played whatever the money that he wanted, Kyle Juste, every everything. So it seems like they want to spend whatever the money and keep the guys that have been performed well and the leaders on the team uh, to stay with them. Other thing is uh, why, why I'm really happy about Fred Warner getting this extension is I mean, everyone was uh, talking about it. We wanted to see it happening. He's the guy that speaks the truth in this team because most of the guy, guys in this team uh, don't get me wrong over here, but they sometimes sugarcoat stuff. Because last year, when we were losing, George Kittle, Monster, Debo, they would come out uh, to the press conference. They would say, okay, we have to get better. This is not the way to get to the Super Bowl again. But not pointing to any specifics. Where is the room? Uh, where is the fault? Is your quarterback not available? Uh, is he getting injured? Is that the issue? But Fred Warner. Probably week 13 or 14, after another embarrassing loss, he came out and said, we can't do this week in, week out. We have to fix it uh, because we are repeating the same thing. It's, it's not an excuse. So I think he is the voice in this team who is going to speak the truth. Uh, he wants the best out of everyone. He is not like a uh, same mold of George Kittle. We are take things like, okay, everything is okay. He is not going to pretend. He's not going to pretend. He, he's an old school guy who always wants 100% from entire team because he's like, I'm doing my best. Okay, you do the best as well. So that's why I think it is important for 49ers to get Fred Warner. Paying him that money, I think it's worth it. This is one of the benefits of having Trey Lance as the quarterback of the future, at least for the next three years, is you can afford to assign your Fred Warners and possibly Nick Bosa next year's when they do move on from Jimmy Garoppolo, whether that's in a week in six weeks or next off season, they'll have a lot of cap room where they can take care of some of their other guys because they have a controllable quarterback uh, like Lance. And so I think it's definitely a good sign that they were able to get Warner done now before training camp really gets going. Obviously there's always going to be injury concerns, especially with this team, but Fred Warner, I think is now the, the leader that I think, Grant, you were searching for last year. I think it's Jimmy Ward and Fred Warner, it's safe to say, are those two guys. And and they have those two guys under contract now. And it, there's no questions about it now. It's the two coverage guys in the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah they can, both can take on tight ends. They both can take on wide receivers. They both can take on running backs. Gives D'Amico Ryan's his defense so much versatility. So I took away a couple things from this. Um, I think first things first is the 49ers finally did something right this offseason. You know, this was expected that it was going to happen for a while. Um, everybody knew that this deal was going to get done. But I'm just glad that the 49ers finally, you know, did the right thing. They made him the highest paid linebacker in the NFL, which he deserves. And I think, um, you know, going forward, they locked down that position and they locked down the quarterback of the defense. You know, he's obviously makes the play calls. He's the leader of the defense. Even though um, Nick Bosa may be comparable in talent, may play a more premium position 
and be probably more valuable overall. I think Fred Warner is the unquestioned leader of the defense, and I think it was a good move by the 49ers. Uh, the second thing that I kind of took away from it was the contract breakdown. I was a little surprised. I thought they were going to front load his deal. It looks like it's more back loaded. You know, he has like a $3.6 million cap hit this year and then uh, $8.1 million next year. So that's kind of weird to me. I thought, you know, hey, we, we're maybe going to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. Let's front load his deal. Uh, let's get him paid right away, get that over with. So it's a little bit weird to me. I think maybe that tells about, um, you know, they're planning to have some expensive players uh, on the roster this season. So that's why they left that cap number low. Uh, it might spell trouble for the people who are thinking, you know, a certain quarterback won't be around come the beginning of the season. I think the 49ers might have planned it uh, to keep uh, our two top quarterbacks on the roster this offseason with the way they structured his contract. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I saw uh, a respected writer that I know very well, Josh Hermsmeyer, writes for 538. Um, his look at football is analytic, uh, mathematical, and he's very smart. And he often says things to rile people up, and he's often basically right. And he was saying that the uh, Jimmy that the Fred Warner contract is awful. And his he didn't really explain why. I'm thinking he would say – because you don't want to invest highly in non-premium positions and middle linebacker is a non-premium position unlike corner defensive end offensive tackle quarterback wide receiver uh i i guess he's essentially right but i would say that middle linebacker can be a premium position if the middle linebacker is as good in coverage as fred warner is because if you're a middle linebacker and most of your value is from stopping the run, then Josh Hermsmeyer has a really good point because who cares about the running game, really? Uh, that's not going to win you a championship, or really, it won't. But if you have a linebacker who's as good in coverage as Warner is, I mean, is he not as valuable as any cornerback? I mean, a lot of the best receivers are tight ends and running backs right now anyway. This guy can cover those players, just like how George Kittle, like, He's not a wide receiver. Okay, would you? how many wide receivers would you rather have over a healthy George Kittle? Seems to me that Warner and Kittle aren't necessarily playing premium positions, but they're definitely premium players who make others better. So I think it's a good signing for sure. Well, and definitely just looking at the, the defenses that are, are known as the best defenses in the NFL outside of the Rams who have Donald and Ramsey, you think of the Bucks, and they have Levante David uh, who – I know Vish loves Levante David, and that that's one of those off-ball linebackers that you love or that people love, and he he has his money. And then Darius Leonard's about to get his money. In this NFL, if you have a linebacker that can cover guys, especially those matchup problem tight ends, mm -hmm. it it's a really big weapon for your defense and allows you to play so much more zone defense if if you need to. It that kind of eliminates those pesky slot receivers. Yeah, so it seems to be that Fred Warner's getting paid around what a an elite cornerback would make. Seems fair. I mean, another he's not getting thing, paid Grant, pass rusher money, but that's okay. Another thing yes. to add to that, Grant, is this is this fits in right with our identity, honestly. When you go back and you look at Patrick Willis, he was that star middle linebacker that anchored our defense. You know, he passed the torch over to Navarro Bowman. During Jim Harbaugh's three seasons where the NFC Championship, um, you know, we had that strong middle linebacker play that kind of set up the whole defense and True. anchored our defense. I think that's been our identity, and I think it's nice to see that they're kind of returning back to that. They're locking down that position, and you know we're going to have that all-star linebacker there in the middle for a while.